Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Flow the Girl podcast. I am your host, Sophia Dawn. And if you're new here, this is a podcast for all things fitness, nutrition, mindset, spiritual wellness. I've had many guests on talking about their own expertise and just sharing different perspectives. My goal is also to help you through the challenges of life, like to literally flow with the growth of life. Um, with the challenges that come our way, with seeking out a different perspective and being more maybe optimistic, having a change on view on things. And so all things health and wellness. And today I want to share 10 daily habits to start and maintain a healthy lifestyle. This was actually inspired by someone who asked me this question and she was kind of wanting to know my feedback and what those 10 would be because she's doing some sort of project, I think. But Um, I thought, wow, this is a really good podcast topic episode that I think would be very valuable to a lot of people. And so I hope it is. And I would encourage you to maybe take notes and write down each one and then maybe choose just one to work on instead of trying to choose all 10 or even more than like three. I would say just, just choosing one, maybe two to focus on and work on, and then you can slowly add more later on once one of the these habits become routine for you. I'm all about starting small, starting simple, and um, I think that there's a lot of power in that that can really help us to be more consistent and it can be something that can help us uh, kind of adopting that 1% better mindset every single day. So we're getting better just 1%. And if it's choosing just one thing to work on, then you're going to be better overall uh, in the long run. That 1% is going to add up over time. Before I get started, I want to share with you another simple, small habit. So maybe this is just kind of like a bonus habit that you can implement into your day. And that is taking a greens supplement every day. And today I want to tell you specifically about athletic greens. Now I'm always for a food first approach, but let's be honest, sometimes we don't get in enough of the greens, the vegetables. Sometimes we just need things to help us to supplement our day, to supplement our nutrition, and just to kind of elevate and help our performance or like whatever goal it is within our health and fitness. And so Athletic Greens is kind of an all-in-one supplement. It has vitamins and minerals and prebiotics and probiotics. It has adaptogens and even a mushroom complex, which sounds weird, but that helps with the digestive process. It helps with nutrient absorption. It helps support the immune system. So, so much, so much good stuff in this. And I personally love to take it in the morning time, but sometimes I don't take it in the morning time. Sometimes I just, I kind of forget and take it during the day, throughout the day. One of my goals is to incorporate more vegetables. And in fact, I'm incorporating a salad as much as possible every day now. But I just know that I still don't get enough of those nutrients. And so taking this is such a simple habit and it takes five seconds. I love the taste, even with this, when it's with just water. I also love it with coconut water or like an almond milk. It's something that can really help with our gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, aging, so many different things. So really one of the reasons why I first started taking it was uh, I was trying to find a green supplement that tasted good and that really supported my gut health because I was at the time really focusing on that as well as um, digestion. And one thing that kind of came to a surprise was when I started drinking it, I found that I started to sleep better as well, which makes sense because there's magnesium in it. Like I said, it's super fast, takes five seconds. It costs you less than $3 a day. And no matter what your lifestyle is, it will fit any lifestyle. So because you listen to Flow with the Grow, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, which is super important going into these cold months when we have less uh, vitamin D from sunshine and we have, you know, you maybe experience seasonal depression, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash flow. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash flow, F-L-O-W. And you can start this super small, easy habit as well yourself. If you take it, let me know how you like it. And with that, let's move on to the rest of the episode, talking about these 10 daily habits to help you start and maintain a healthy lifestyle. And this is something also that you can incorporate now that it is December. Wow, December 2022. I literally remember like it was yesterday, this time of year. And uh, and then the new year came and writing down my new year's goals and like 
all the things. And it's just wild that we're here and a year later, freaking crazy. So this is also something that you can implement during the holiday season. And in fact, I recommend it, especially just starting with one of these. One thing that you can do during the holiday season to keep you on track, to help you with keeping the habits that you already have, uh, maybe starting your health and fitness journey before that new year comes. We know that there's holiday parties and goodies and all those things. So why not just practice one of these habits throughout this holiday season? So these are not not in any particular order necessarily, just kind of what I came up with when I was thinking about these 10 habits. Number one, drink more water. And I also wrote down one gallon per day because that can be a good goal to shoot for. Even if you're not drinking a full gallon or you know you won't or you try it and you only drink like less than half, whatever, it's still a good goal to shoot for because you're still trying to be more conscious of drinking more water. And um, being more intentional with that, ha- you know, prior to that, like if you weren't thinking about drinking more water. It's honestly, it's an easy thing to do, but it's an easy thing not to do. But there's just so many uh, good things about water that are going to help you in your uh, aid in your fat loss journey. Things that are going to, hel- it's just going to help you with overall health. I think most of us know that, but it's actually just doing it. So Drinking more water, A good, another good goal to shoot for would be your half of your body weight in ounces and add 15 ounces for every hour of activity that you do, like if you go to work out or exercise. Now, with that being said, I also want to note that let's say you're not drinking any water at all. Well, then a good goal would be to drink one water bottle per day. If you have a water bottle or if you go buy one, whatever it is, let's say you have a water bottle, it's 32 ounces and you drink one of those a day. Well, a good goal to shoot for would be then two per day. So we're just increasing it just by a little bit so that it's within reach and you can set yourself up for success. So yes, I said one gallon per day, that can be a good good goal to shoot for. But also if we're thinking just day to day here, think about what you normally have and then just increase that by a little bit and then every so often increase it just a little bit more, uh, more and more each day, each week, whatever it is. Also, in my free Facebook community, Food Freedom and Muscle Building Solutions, we are currently doing a water, kind of like a mini challenge for the month of December because it is an easy thing to do and it is one thing that we can do during the holidays that are, it's going to benefit us in many different ways during the holidays, during December, and even afterwards when we start the new year. So if you would like to be a part of that, you can find the link below in the show notes, or you can also message me, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or email me. Instagram, I'm at Sophia underscore Dawn for one. That's S-O-P-H-I-A underscore D-A-W-N for one. On Facebook, you can also find me, Sophia Dawn Nelik Aroba. Good luck spelling that. I'll have that in the show notes. Or you can email me at flowthegirlpodcast at gmail.com. So like I said, we have that water challenge going on. Not only that, but I share a lot and teach a lot about, and we'll be doing more of that around nutrition, around having a better relationship with food, with not restricting any foods, with building muscle, and with losing body fat. So come on in, join us, would love to have you. All right, moving on. Number two, three to five deep breaths every morning and setting an intention or having a positive thought to get your mind right for the day. Now, I didn't say meditation. I did not say meditation because I I think that when that word gets thrown around, it's like, well, we have to have this big setup and uh, kind of create that environment with like different, you know, crystals and like cars and like all these things. And it's kind of like people almost think like you have to do it a certain way when really you don't. If you're just sitting, take three mindful deep breaths, like that is meditation. And so what I've been doing lately is I'll just like sit, even if it's in the parking lot before I go into my, before I go into my workout or work or before I start my work day at home, I will just sit and take three to five deep breaths and then set an intention for the day. Meaning I will either kind of visualize how I want my day to look and feel. I will think a positive thought and it just helps me to get my mind right for the rest of the day. And even if you start off in maybe like a negative way or with a negative thought, you're kind of having a down day, use this, use this, and it can help to change the whole rest of your day, your whole attitude, mood, um, and everything coming forward in that day. Number three, practicing staying positive. Now, I'm not saying that you need to force positivity when maybe you're just, you know, having a doubt, you're kind of feeling down or sad. Like you can, you can still accept those emotions and recognize those and be okay with those. 
But also when I say practice staying positive, I mean, for example, let's just say something goes wrong in your day or something happens you didn't expect or you drop your coffee and it spills everywhere, whatever, like something like that. We have the choice to either react or respond. And if we respond in a way that's going to benefit us, even if it's a challenge, like there have been times when maybe I spill something, like let's just say I spill coffee and it can be frustrating. It's like, oh, it's so easy for us in our minds just to be like, oh, God damn it. Like, you know, like get mad and frustrated. But really, we can just take a moment to breathe and be like, you know what? This happened. It is what it is. And I'm just going to take the time to clean this up. And and then also thinking of, okay, what is being intentional with thinking about what is the reason as to why this happened? What can I learn? What can I do differently next time? So really, we're using these situations for to our benefit and it'll benefit and, and it'll just help our perspective in life and on different situations and experiences. And it can just help us to honestly live a better life. And there are studies done shown that people live longer when they have this set of, you know, mindset and this way of thinking. And so it can, just like really any of these, it can help create a ripple effect with a whole lot of other habits and other things in our lives. And that's also why I say practice, because it's not easy, it's challenging, and it really does have to be a practice, because sometimes you're maybe not going to respond in a positive way or be intentional with your thoughts, but then you're going to look back and be like, okay, I should have maybe responded differently to that, or I should have, or, you know, this is how I could have handled it differently. And this is a really great tool and practice to use with people as well. If we come in contact with someone that kind of frustrates us, irritates us, like they're kind of being mean, we want to snap back. Um, it can really help us just be kind in that moment. And then later on, we won't regret that. Like we will probably regret how we treat someone if it came off in a reactive manner versus if we just respond. Okay, so that was number three. Number four, adopting the add more mentality when it comes to food and nutrition. I've talked about this before in previous episodes, but when we adopt the add more instead of restricting less, instead of restricting more, instead of limiting or avoiding certain foods, we then take our minds away from what we're limiting it and what we're restricting it. Because when we're restricting something, whether it's a cookie, donut, like whatever it is that we want, our brain is going to want more of that. So instead of our brains being restrictive in that way, we're it's more of like a positive connotation here. We're adding more. It feels better. And then you can naturally maybe have less of that thing that you're wanting less of. It's kind of having a more of this abundant mindset when it comes to nutrition and food. So for example, instead of thinking, I want to restrict and eat less sweets, I'm going to say, I'm going to add more whole foods. I'm going to add more fruit and vegetables and proteins to my day. And this may also lead to you having less cravings for that thing that you always crave. Or it can also lead to drinking no more pop. Like if you want to drink more water and you want to drink less pop, instead of saying, I'm going to cut out pop and only have like one per week, or like you're just thinking about restricting and avoiding pop, you're just going to want that more and more, right? So instead of doing that, thinking, okay, I'm just going to drink more water and try and have more, consume more more water. So because you're consuming more water, you're probably naturally just going to drink less pop anyways. And then in the future, you'll probably drink pop and then find that it doesn't even taste good. Like you don't even want it. It makes you feel icky and gross. So that is the add more mentality. Number five, strength train at least one time per week. So I didn't say exercise every single day. I didn't say do a workout every single day. Because sometimes that can be a lot for people. If you're not working out at all and you want to start working out, a good goal would be just one time per week you go to the gym or one time per week you do an at-home workout. So again, we're starting small, starting simple. And I say strength train specifically because it is so good for us to do, to lift weights, obviously, and to add muscle. Like that is only going to benefit the goals that we have. And increasing muscle is going to help you change the shape of your body. If you're wanting to lose weight, if you're wanting to lose body fat, we need to add muscle in order to increase that metabolism. So that's why I said strength, strength train at least one time per week. Number six, Listen to something uplifting or educational in the morning time. And this can be maybe while you're getting ready. It can be maybe while you're on your commute to work. It can be just something, even if it's like five minutes before you start your work day, just something to also get your mind right. And over time, like just think of all of the encouraging, empowering words that you're going to hear. Or if there's something specific that you're wanting to learn, all the things that you're going to learn more about because of you doing this five minutes a day. 
I personally like to listen to something while I'm cleaning in the morning time. And I will usually choose either education for my nutrition or it'll be something to get uh, that's going to help my mindset, getting kind of get my mind right for the day. And there's just so many options out there. Number seven, do not look at your phone in the morning right away. I think it's so easy to, you know, pick up our phone after the alarm goes off and see all these notifications on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and be like, ooh, what is that? What is that? What is that? But you are letting other people dictate you in that moment, dictate how you're going to maybe feel or dictate how your day starts. And I know that maybe this isn't for everyone, but if you've never tried it before, I would highly recommend that you try it. Something that has helped me is to put my screen time on. So I'll do that. Uh, I have an iPhone, so I automatically set my screen time to be like, I don't know what it is, like 10 or 11 at night. Um, Actually, it's probably, yeah, it's probably like 9 or 10 at night. And then I don't have my notifications come on until like 11 or 11.30. And if I'm starting my workday and I need to check my email on my phone, I can't use my computer, like I will, um, you know, use that. But it's mostly so that I don't have all these social media notifications on my phone right away in the morning time. Like I wanna focus on me, on getting my day started right. And for me personally, when I look at things on social media and it automatically captures me in to continue to scroll. And then I find myself comparing myself to other people and I just, I can't explain it other, other than I just like don't feel good after I look at it. And so for me, I just know that I can't look at it right away in the morning. It's not for me, I can't do it. So that's just one thing that I would encourage you to do as well. Number eight, not looking at your phone right before bed. So just like how we start our day is important, it's also equally as important as to how we end our day and kind of setting ourselves up for a good night's sleep. And uh, I'm definitely not saying that I'm perfect at this because there's times that I look at my phone before bed or we'll just kind of scroll on TikTok and watch stuff before bed. But I, for me, notice that I don't get as good of quality sleep. I have headache in the morning when I look at my phone right before bed. And a lot of that has to do with the blue light screens too. So if you have blue light blocking glasses, if you do look at your phone or computer before bed, definitely recommend putting those on. But if at all possible, I would recommend not even looking at your phone before bed because it'll affect sleep And that will then affect so many other things in a negative way when it comes to your goals. Number nine, a five minute walk in the morning time. One of my favorite things to do is, and I do it every day, after I get up, I brush my teeth, I go downstairs, maybe hang out for a little bit, but then I take our dog Nova on a walk and it always, it wakes me up. I can take some time for me for focusing on maybe being intentional with my breath, on just becoming present with the surroundings. And especially now that it's winter time, it's colder in the morning time and well, throughout the day, all day it's colder. But because it is colder, it just, it wakes me up. It feels good. I'm getting that fresh air, that fresh breeze. And it's just a little bit of exercise to start my day. And number 10, being aware of our food language, the thoughts and the language, how we speak, how we think around food. And more specifically, not categorizing food as good or bad. This automatically attaches guilt, shame, regret, and it creates a negative relationship with food. So notice these two things that I talked about around food, so adopting the more mentality, and then the food language, not categorizing food as good or bad. It's not necessarily to eat more of a specific food or to eat less of something and not really even specific to nutrition by any means, but it's something that is going to help you with your relationship with food and that will then help you with your fat loss goals and with it being just kind of like a strong foundation to continue whatever health and fitness goal it is that you have. We must have a healthy relationship with food in order to reach any goals that we have. It's just like with our mindset, we have to have the right mindset in order to reach our goals. A healthy life, a healthy lifestyle, a healthy diet, a healthy way of eating is to first have a healthy relationship with food. So instead of categorizing food as good or bad, I like to categorize it as, and not really even categorize it, but food is food, all food. And there's a spectrum, right, of either most nourishing to our bodies and our minds to not as nourishing. Like I always just try and word it as either more nutrient dense than other foods or more nourishing than other foods, or maybe it serves me better, it serves me in a healthier way, it serves me better mentally, emotionally, physically than another type of food. This has helped me to create such a healthy food food, such a healthy relationship with food, 
and to have more balance than ever before in my life. And it is, it really is free and it's such a better way to live. And that's that. That's the den, the, the den. I was saying den, 10. And then, so, and then was reading daily. Okay. The 10 daily habits to start and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Let's recap quickly. Number one, drink more water. Number two, taking three to five deep breaths and setting an intention for your day before your day starts. Number three, practicing staying positive. Number four, adopting the add more mentality. Number five, strength training at least one time per week. Number six, listen to something uplifting or educational in the morning time. Number seven, not looking at your phone right away in the morning time. Number eight, not looking at your phone right before bed. Number nine, a five minute walk in the morning. And number 10, food language. Being intentional with the language that we speak and think when it comes to food and nutrition. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was maybe a different 10 daily habits than what you have maybe heard in the past. And like I said, try and choose just one to work on to start with and then go from there. Happy beginning of December. Happy holiday season. As always, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, week, weekend. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Flow With The Grow. I'll see you next week for your daily dose of positivity and growth.